For many people, childhood memories often involve a bicycle. Perhaps it was when you got your first bike, or maybe it was when you learned how to ride it. Bicycles have always allowed us to bond with others and experience adventures in the open air. If you were a kid in the 1960s and 70s, then there's a good chance you wanted a Schwinn Stingray bike. The name Schwinn has been associated with high-quality bikes since its humble beginnings in 1895. Schwinn introduced the original Stingray in 1963 after the company noticed kids in California were modifying their bikes to resemble motorcycles. Those kids were buying used 20-inch bicycle frames and refitting them with longer seats and ape hanger handlebars. Al Fritz, who was Schwinn's vice president of research and development, caught wind of this new fad in 1962 and he flew to California to see it for himself. Fritz recognized the design's mass market potential, so he went to work on a prototype. Many of Schwinn's employees were skeptical of this new bike, but Fritz insisted that it be built. The bike featured high-rise handlebars, a banana seat, and a coaster brake on the back wheel. The name Stingray came from the high-rise handlebars, which Fritz thought looked like a stingray swimming through the water. The bike was released to the public in June of 1963. That same year, the Stingray Corvette hit the market and it helped solidify the connection between the bike and the muscle cars of the 1960s. The Stingray bike sold incredibly well with a retail price of $49.95 and it quickly became the best-selling bike in Schwinn's history. Over 45,000 bikes were sold in just a couple months and they would have sold more if it wasn't for the tire shortage. Schwinn spent the rest of 1963 building as much as they could. 1964 became an even larger year in Stingray sales when they appeared in the Schwinn catalog. The bike was featured on the back cover. It was described as being highly maneuverable with a short turning radius and a quick response on starts with its high traction studded rear tire. The seat was listed as a solo polo saddle and the bike was offered in four colors. Flamboyant lime, red radiant copper tone, sky blue, and violet. In 1965, a slick rear tire was added to the bike. 1968 saw the introduction of what is likely the most memorable addition, which was called the Stingray Crate. They were sold from 1968 to 1973, and they had a unique five-speed stick shift that was mounted on the top tube right between the seat and the handlebars. The bike featured a 20-inch rear tire and a 16-inch front tire with a spring fork on the front. It also had ape hanger bars with handbrakes and the bike really had a chopper motorcycle feel to it with the front and rear chrome fenders. The crate model came in three colors, orange crate, lemon peeler, and apple crate. Between 1969 and 1970, the colors green pea picker and white cotton picker were added. 1971 introduced the gray ghost. The Stingray Crate became Schwinn's iconic signature bike and kids everywhere wanted one. More than 50 years later, the bike still stands for freedom and adventure. In the late 70s and 80s, Schwinn had some setbacks. The BMX bike was coming on strong by the mid-70s. Schwinn was late to capitalize on this new bicycle trend because they believed it was a dangerous sport. The company was also late on having a mountain bike because they felt it was just a fad that would fade away. Because of those two things happening, the Stingray line declined in popularity and the last ones were made in 1982. Ten years later, the company filed for bankruptcy in 1992. However, the Schwinn name was still highly regarded and well known so it was purchased by some new investors. The Schwinn Stingray bikes are still being made today, but they aren't quite the same. The bikes are manufactured overseas and they are mainly in big box stores like Walmart. A lot of the different models and options of the Stingray line are just not available anymore. An interesting fact about the Stingray bikes is that they were not the first muscle bikes to be sold. Peter Mole of Huffy got with the California trend and he created the Huffy Penguin. As the story goes, he was getting a lot of orders for bicycle parts from kids that were creating these chopper bikes for themselves. When Peter looked into what they were doing, he decided to get in on this new fad. 
The new Penguin bike sold in Southern California dealers beginning on March 3, 1963, which was a few months before Stingray released their bikes. Just like Stingray, Huffy sold all of their bikes but were short on tires, which prevented them from making more to be sold until 1964. These two chopper bikes became so popular that other brands decided to come out with their own version. The style also made its way to England where a chopper bike was made by Raleigh and sold in April of 1969. Everywhere you looked, kids were riding these chopper bikes throughout the 1960s and 70s. To many people, the dragster bikes represented a sense of freedom and adventure that kids had never experienced before. Do you remember your first bike from childhood? Let us know which one you had in the comments below. As always, thank you so much for watching. Motorcycles do it. Cars do it. Even trucks do it. Now you can do it. A real wheelie with wheelie bar. A wheelie bar just like the big dragsters use. Wheelie Bar is a precision-engineered permanent accessory made by Whammo for bikes like Stingray, Wildcat, and Spider. It's made out of hardened chrome-plated steel to take a real beating when you do a wheelie or lay a strip of rubber like this. But Wheelie Bar isn't just for dragging. It's for exhibition riding, too. So see who can do the most tricks. See who can go the farthest. See who can have the most fun. Remember, you can't do a real wheelie without a wheelie bar. And only Whammo makes wheelie bar. More fun from Whammo. So go with the big ones with wheelie bars. Sold wherever bikes are sold.